This is the Sand Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's edition of the Pit Stop, where you, the pit crew, you are the real star of today's show. Thank you for being here. Happy Monday to everybody out there, and I hope you all had a good weekend. I I honestly wish I could say I had a good weekend. Uh, you know, all right, so here we are on a Monday morning. I don't even know how to approach this topic and where we're at. Everybody predicting a big rant today. I'm not sure if it'll come off quite as a rant. We'll see how it plays out. Um, this weekend was the iRacing 24 Hours of Spa. Um, now, keep in mind the last endurance race that we did, uh, we got in a really bad server. There was a lot of warping and, and movement of, of cars that, that resulted in damage to our car and oh it was a whole nightmare thunder motorsports thank you very much buddy thank you so much um so so i'm i i came into this event a little upset from the previous event to be honest with you and 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 as i i get into this and we haven't changed our graphic maybe i should change our graphic to talk about this a little bit more um i uh Oh, oh my God. I don't, again, I don't even know how to handle this. So I came into this a little upset. We don't have a whole bunch of news. Doug Hawley, thank you so much. We're wearing the, the uh, Cole Trickle, the Cole, Sean Cole Trickle t-shirt. Joe uh, Antonio, the winner of our meme contest. This is the shirt, the winning entry. Thank you so much, Doug Hawley. Um, so I came into this a little upset before we even got going on it. And or at least not happy with the way things went from the previous event. Anyway, okay, so long story short, two things happened to us on Saturday morning. Saturday morning was our big uh, race. We had about six, seven guys ready to go. We had our, our car ready, our paint job ready. We had done all of our uh, 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 practice and preparation. We had a common setup that everybody had done, liked. We had our schedule of drivers. We were ready to go. Uh, we had qualified our car. We had done all the steps we do believe to be ready for this race. And then at 6.30 in the morning, or my time, when we are trying to join the race, there is no race to be joined. Uh, none of our guys can see a race in the racing column. And I don't, to this minute, I still don't know what we did wrong. And at the time, I was getting outraged about iRacing, uh, thinking that they had screwed something up and that the race wasn't even going on. But then I'm seeing streams starting up of various different people in the race and we none of our guys there's like four or five of us looking none of us could see the race none of us could join the race and we were out before it even started um so my first rant or my first level of being upset is a hundred percent with us like i don't know i don't even know what to fix or cure or do differently um we were there at 6 a.m. Yes, yeah, sorry, Frito. We were there at 6 a.m. Uh, I believe the actual time was at 6.10, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but we were there from, honestly, we were there from 5.45 in chat. Um, there are a few things I don't know. I just don't know what went wrong. But the Simpit Rick Motek Endurance Team was not given a starting spot in the race, and we were out. That's it. Um, and I... I the amount of days that I put a red line through my calendar preparing for it, the amount of time for the weekend that I had told friends, family, hey, I'm unavailable from Saturday morning to Sunday morning, and then I'm going to be wiped out after that, uh, to, to cancel all real life, all sim life, all other plans for an event, and to have it not even take the green flag, I can't even tell you what a mental loop that, that threw me for. I went through an entire just breakdown i mean i was i i talked about the other day about breaking things as a release or how angry that that we all might get at various different points i was at rock bottom for sean cole as a sim racer um just the amount of time and energy the amount of anticipation and eagerness to do the event and then to be sitting there doing nothing um I, I still, honestly, I, I like I, I, I'm actually having a hard time talking about this right now. I want to point fingers and blame and be a bitch. Last Friday we talked about sim racers being the biggest bitches on earth. Um, I, I still just don't even know what to do. I'm like ready to throw in the towel and say I don't ever want to do another endurance race ever again 
purely because of this. And and I can't blame anybody but myself uh, or ourselves as far as the team goes. I'm the team leader, so I take the, the, the main brunt of the blame. Um, I feel badly for all the other parts of our team, the other members of the team who also were there ready to go, put in the time, put in the effort, were willing to take on the challenge and were not able to. Um, I'm just so upset. And, and for us to be the only team uh, that had this – like, I don't know what we did wrong. I just don't know. We've run a lot of these events. I don't know what we did wrong. But for us to be on the sidelines for no reason, just – I'm so upset. That's part one. Part two. Part two. Now I am going to point some fingers. I racing. All right. I – I'm an iRacing fanboy. I think that's pretty known. iRacing is my favorite sim. And when people want to argue or talk about why or what they do or don't like about it, and I will always defend iRacing, talking about their competition structure, talking about things like the i rating and the safety rating and, and the ladder system and the ranking system and all the things that make iRacing so special to me. If you take that part away, then you compare iRacing on a level of physics and graphics and force feedback and other things with other sim. And I honestly, I, I, I can't really necessarily pick a favorite or, or it might not even be iRacing if it was just put to that level. When I add the competition structure, the online multiplayer racing, the rule system and all these things to iRacing, it puts it to the top. That's my justification. That's my argument for being such a huge iRacing fanboy. And now iRacing has made a consistent error that is starting to really diminish my thoughts on that. So on an average Friday night, if you just jump into a race and there's only like 10, 20, 30 people, the iRating system only means so much. It requires enough people being involved, number one, for the ranking system to have depth. Number two, enough participants in the race to have a selection from that leaderboard and hopefully multiple splits in order to put people racing against who they belong racing against. Um, these are the rules that iRacing have put in place. These are the rules we argue uh, about, uh, whether it's right or wrong or too harsh or too easy. These are the, the, the concepts of iRacing that have been pillars of their structure and consistency for so long. And then all of a sudden comes this incident limit problem. And I'm going to call it a big problem, and it's iRacing's problem. iRacing can't seem to figure out how to have any kind of consistency or make any kind of proper ruling when it comes to incident limits and how we are to conduct ourselves on the big events. You know, a Friday night race, I get disqualified like this because I break the incident limit. On an, on an absolutely insignificant, no consequence race, we are held to the highest of standards in iRacing. And then for the biggest event of the year, for some of the biggest events of the year, they lose their friggin' minds. And on Friday night, you had a 44 incident limit, which is very strict. 45th incident, you're DQ'd from the event. Yet for the Saturday race, hey, who needs an incident limit? Let's go back to the version of Spa where there are no rules. And the, those who've learned to drive with no boundaries of the track can cheat the system and gain one, one and a half, two seconds a lap per lap on drivers as long as they're willing to let everything else go out the window. Um, and I just feel like it's inexcusable. Like, I will sit here and argue that if there was no incident limit ever, that, hey, it's our job as a driver to find the boundaries of the sim. But when you make a change in the 11th hour and you have teams that have practiced and prepared to drive a clean race within the rules of the system that we always race with <coughs> in iRacing, I can't just switch that. I can't just become a cheater on one minute's notice. I need to prepare for the cheater line if that's the way we're going to race. I feel that this is a, a huge, huge error in judgment 
or a huge mistake. I don't want to call it a mistake because they keep doing it over and over and over. We've had this problem over and over and over. Yeah, it killed your I rating, but if your Max Verstappen only has like a 1500 I rating anyway, he's not going to care. He doesn't give a crap. Aliens don't give a crap. They'll go get their I rating. It's about the event. And for me, it's not something you change. You make a rule and you stick to it. And if you're going to have a system that is very strict and harsh on the quality of racing when it comes to I rating, safety rating, contact, off tracks, you don't pull the rules for the big event. If any, that is the event that it should have the harshest of rules, in my opinion. This is, again, my opinion. Uh, I racing, I'm sure you're going to take offense to what I'm saying because I'm not being very kind to you right now. But these are my real thoughts. I just feel that, that rules are there. And you don't play a whole season of baseball and then for the World Series, you just kind of lighten up the rules because it's the World Series. That's the day you treat it the most sacred, the most important. So I am going to give iRacing a giant fail for the Spa 24. I'm going to congratulate Team Redline on winning top split. It was Max Verstappen, Lando Norris, Max Benecke, and Max Wenig who went on to win the event despite Max Verstappen losing his pedals at the very end and they came off of his rig and he actually had to swerve to slow it down, make a correction, and finish the race. They still went on to win and what's really funny if you look at the stats, I don't know the exact numbers here right now, Max Verstappen and Lando Norris were responsible for like 88% of the total off tracks of their team. Max Benecke and Max Wenig both ran relatively clean for the top split uh, as far as off track cheating, cutting, whatever you want to call it, incidents. But Max and Lando racked up like hundreds and hundreds on their own. And I, I just, you know, they have nothing to lose. You know, Billy and I, we talk about respect. Uh, we talk about, you know, things like that when it comes to sim racing. And I just, you know, it's cheating. You know, when you get an incident and it gives you the warning, you're cheating. Now, if you're willing to throw your I rating out the window and just take a huge, your safety rating uh, uh, out the window, I just don't care. Yeah, those guys will just ask for their license back. And, you know, I, I'm going to go out on one more limb. Um... Who did they make this call for? Like when iRacing decided to turn it off, because it was turned on for the Friday night race, 44 incidents. And if you know Spa, 24 hours with 44 incidents, that is strict rules. So the people who ran the Friday night race raced in some of the strictest rules you're going to race in. And yet the people on Saturday morning that had all the big names, all the big teams, they had no rule book. What the hell? Let the big boys do whatever they want, I guess, huh? Was that the attitude? Did they make this call for the likes of a Lando Norris and a Max Verstappen? And I'm not trying to single them out, but you know what? They're not losing anything because I'm sitting here questioning things. But was it a team red line that said, hey, you guys should turn off that incident limit because people are going to cheat it anyway? No, they're going to get DQ'd like they should. You're cheating. When you're going outside of the track, lim track limits, you are cheating. Period. End of story. I have no, there's nothing you can even tell me, honestly, to change my opinion. You're welcome to your opinion. iRacing is welcome to theirs. But this is something that I'm going to stick to my guns on. And and, and I'll, I'll, I'll allow you to have your own opinion, but I will differ. And I just feel that when we have rules, we know them, we live by them 364 of the days of the year. It's not Christmas because it's spa and do whatever you want. So that's the end of my rant. It was a terrible event. It ruined my entire weekend. And if you can't hear it in my tone of voice, I'm still pissed off about it. I did Wreckfest with my friends trying to blow off steam. We played for about three hours. And I think I said maybe a total of 10 words the whole time. I have no, no, I had no ability. I had nothing to say. The only things that were going to come out of my mouth were going to be curse words and inflammatory statements about iRacing and their incompetence. Um, <laughs> so, what wasn't going to be a rant, as you picked up on, I couldn't hold back. I'm still pissed off. I'm still, it ruined my weekend. Ooh, big deal weekend. You know what? When you're my age, you'll start appreciating every weekend. Um, mm. My mic is oversensitive. 
you know, I've been having a problem with every time this mic gets unplugged from my computer and replugged, Windows resets the volume. So I apologize for that. I see what it's doing. It's flatlining, and it's probably because I have it peaked and then had to turn it down in order to uh, get it there. So I, I'll, I'll work on that. I'm always trying to make things a little bit better when it comes to audio. So uh, Redline, big deal. They won. Uh, Mitchy Hoyer, him and his new team, these guys, they, they made the top split and actually finished 17th place. So good for them. Well done. Good job, Mitchie. Uh, a little incident at the end I hear about. Uh, the the big boys, of course, they get a ride up. So Autosport talking about F1 drivers. Norris and Verstappen joined to win the virtual 24 hours of SPA. And what they, I don't know if they went on in this article. They probably didn't, you know, because they're all being politically correct. Uh, I, I don't see a single mention here about the fact that iRacing just completely screwed the pooch. F you, iRacing. All right. What else? What else? Um, I don't have a whole lot, um, I don't have a whole lot of news today. It's a Monday, it's the middle of summer, uh, a lot of big things have already happened, and we're just kind of in a waiting pattern, so we'll blow through the news. I've wasted enough of your guys' time. I, I hope you don't mind, I feel like a little selfish, by the way, when I do a rant, and it's something so personal like this, I feel like I'm being selfish, like I'm, I'm, you know, it's like, well, who cares? You know, we all have our, there are bigger problems in the world, Sean, then you didn't get to race in the spa 24 hours. You know, that. so uh, if you feel like I'm just a little too much, uh, I, I, I get it. I understand. I just, I can't even hold back or help it. And that's the show. That's going to do it for today's show. Forget the news. I racing ate the news as well. I'm done. I'm just kidding. Uh, round four in the Project Cars Logitech G Challenge. So this is a big deal. Round four is now going on. Get out there, you guys. You know, even if you can't be a contender in some of these competitions, I always talk about leaderboards. Leaderboards are a great way to see where you really stand. Uh, you know, how do you and, and you don't and you can be very private about it. So maybe we all are 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 shy and we don't really want to, you know, expose to the world that I'm 900th place. So maybe you don't need to tell people, but it's still nice to know and it's a great way to find a goal. You know, if you're racing in i racing, I'll use that as an example and you're doing a Friday night GT3 race, sure we want to do well, but it's really just hard to see the advancements that you want to, to to make, you know, and if you're actually clearly making those advancements, leaderboards give you a goal, an immediate goal that you can keep attacking, keep attacking. Um, all right, I see a lot of you guys are agreed. There was a guy with 1,800 incidents, but it only shows 1,024. Well, because, you know, that's so much better. It was a joke of an event. Um, when you put, here's the other thing. Getting back to respect. When you are a racer, who's a gentleman racer in particular, and this doesn't mean that you can't be one of the fastest in the world, you have your own built-in rule or moral system as well. And I think what happens when they pull the rule book out like they did, that number one, it's lawlessness, it's ruleless, at rulelessless, and that's no way to race, especially a top split, especially a big event where you have over a thousand drivers involved. It's not just a league race, thirty people. This is a thousand people let down by the day. Chris Phillips, oh man, you rock! Go! Right, that was your quote, not mine, <laughs> but um. I, I just feel that, that what you have is a situation where half of the people in the event are playing by one set of rules, and then you have a whole other group of people who are playing by a different set of rules because they've created this really weird sense. You know, when I go off track and it says 1X, I'm not thinking about my safety rating. I'm thinking, oh, I just made a rule violation, so to speak. So, so I feel like they created two sets of rules, those who play by a, a moral or respect rule book and those who throw caution to the wind and just don't care. Winning is everything. Um, <laughs> thank you, Chris Phillips. Chris Phillips, one of the drivers, let down. Chris was there feeling the pain. Chris put in the work. Chris was ready to go. Chris had signed up for his slots. He's going to pull an all-nighter like the rest of us. And next thing you know, you're sitting there with nothing to do for the next 24 hours. 
Um, I agree, Billy. I think it, that especially for the big events, like I said, when it comes to the Super Bowl, you know what? I want my best officials and I want my best called game ever. You know, what? whatever we did to get up there, we play a lot of games. It all evens out over time. But when it comes down to the big event, I want the strictest rules. I want the tightest enforcement. I want the most uh, watchful eyes. Uh, you know, and I think that's a fair thing to ask. Especially, you know, the other thing we haven't even brought up in all of this. That's what you're paying for in iRacing. Um, you know, you're paying for the service in, you get a game as a byproduct of paying for the service. When you buy a set of Corsa, you're paying for a game. You get the game, it's yours to do what you want, you know. You buy everything else. You buy the game, it's yours to do what you want. When you're buying iRacing, you're buying a tech game. A tech. Sorry, I'm reading chat. You're buying a service, and 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 that, in my opinion, by the way, gives us even more right to bitch, complain, piss and moan, whatever you want to say. Uh, what did Amir say? I missed what Amir said. Should I backtrack a little bit? <coughs> I racing needs to do two things. One, redo the safety rating I rating system. It needs an overhaul. I agree. Two, redo the track limits according to FIA rules. I completely agree with you, or whatever sanctioning body that, that is most applicable to those tracks. I completely agree, and I think the safety rating and I rating wasn't a bad effort out of the gates. I don't know how much refinement it's seen over the years. I've never liked the way you can just completely cheat the safety rating system. Now, the I rating system has gotten a little more cutthroat. Like... If you're plateaued at an I rating, whatever it be, 1,800, 2,000, 2,500, 5,000, you will find there are plateaus in I racing that are very hard to get over. It takes a lot of concentrated work and a little bit of luck on top of it. So the I rating part might be in, in little less need of an overhaul. What it needs is a lot more participation. Um, you know, when you have a point system, it requires as big a polling group as possible to make those numbers relevant. Um, and that's one of the problems with the I rating system when it comes to individual races, like a Friday night race on their system. If there's only like 20 people, it doesn't, the I rating is really not applicable other than how many points are on the line for the race. Um, it doesn't do a great job of grouping people that are belong together together. Ooh, I'm getting a data usage warning on my phone. <laughs> um, anyway, okay. Are we going to, uh, we're going to do some news too. We are going to cover a little bit of news. Uh, Sim Contender asked, Sean, will I compete in the next race? You know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me a third time, and I pull the plug. Um, I, yes, I I really, really do love endurance racing. Uh, the reason this ruined my, my weekend is because I love endurance racing. So, yes, Petit Le Mans in October. I will be running Petit Le Mans. Even though Petit Le Mans is a very difficult endurance race, by the way. Very difficult endurance race. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I will definitely be running if something like this happens again. And there are two parts to this. Um, in the end, I'm glad we didn't run because I would have been really aggravated for the entire 24-hour race watching some teams cut, hearing my guys ask if we should cut, maybe watching one of our guys start to do some cutting and then spin out because he doesn't know that driving line yet. Um, I, it's really, I would have been really aggravated to run that event witnessing it for 24 hours. And it would have been really hard for me to make the right call. Because uh, all I would have done was sort of run the proper line, but then just been a little lazy on some corner exits. But it wouldn't have gained me much time advantage. I just would have racked up a bunch of incidents without gaining the advantage. That's what would have happened in my version of running that race. Um, so, I, I, but yes, I am going to run Petit Le Mans. I love endurance racing. I want all of this to be as good as it can be because it's some of my favorite discipline of racing. So... Um, great question, by the way, because 
I've been wondering that myself. Um, hmm. See, and this is the problem. You know, it's... I just... Do you remember when Billy and I were really touchy about Assetto Corsa Competizione? It wasn't just me and Billy. It was a lot of people because I think that everybody inside, based on their marketing, was hoping and praying that somebody was going after iRacing, that somebody was building more than just a sim. And I hate to say this, but other than iRacing, everybody else is building a sim. iRacing built a service. Um, and I faulted them for that today, but I need that service. You know, sim racing systems is great, but it isn't the caliber of iRacing when it comes to that, when things are going well, I really hope that somebody out there, please, please, somebody project cars is talking about P cars, whatever the next one's going to be called. I have that in my stories today. Uh, being 200% better and built on fun. Well, th the whole structure of iRacing is not fun. It's competition. So I don't think they're doing it. F1 2019, they're not even trying to build a friggin' sim. Um, so, so who's going to do it? Who's going to build more than a game? Because look at the potential. If we can argue sims all day long. But let's just say that you were a huge R Factor 2 fan and you knew your favorite mods and it was just dialed in and ready to be a competition sim. If it had the backbone structure of iRacing, it would change the world forever because now you'd have a competitor service sim. And a competitor service sim is going to mean that they now have to start answering these questions. You know, iRacing can ignore what I'm saying today iRacing can ignore what the forum said for the most part and just keep doing what they're doing because they have no competition. And I don't think they go into it saying, hey, take it or leave it, but they can have a little bit of that kind of mentality. Um, but I don't know. Maybe the business model isn't there to go after iRacing. Maybe the, the numbers don't add up compared to the amount of money that Project Cars 2 has probably made off of their title without having to deal with any of this conversation that we've had here today. So anyway, round four in the Logitech G Challenge. Get out there and give it a try. Um, no, Tim, I did not. I was in no mood to work on gear or do anything this weekend, so I didn't touch anything um, at all. But I've heard it works. So um, there was an update going on this morning, so seven hours ago at this point, and it was updating the online services... For F1 2019, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll be eating my words. Maybe they are going after a competition sim. So don't know. They didn't really have a list of the updates. They're just calling it online services. And everything should be... It said downtime two hours. And it says they'll let you know when the services are back online. Um, update completed. So, yep, they are back online. But there was a, a some form of an online services update to Codemasters. <clears throat> There's a license system for R Factor, but it died a death. Oh. Uh, GT Sport as a competition platform? I think it is in certain respects. Um, I have yet to see a console that allows for racing at the same level or anything close to it that a PC can do. Um, not even close. You have a player limitation. You have a who's hosting the race limitation. Um, you can have point systems, but without it being really integral, I'm not sure it can have the same power as what iRacing has. If iRacing put more attention in their SR and iRating, if they put more attention to their ladder system and their competition schedule, if they did a little more to get people racing... Uh, I think they could really take what they have and put it through the roof. Um, I, You know, without competition, they don't have to do it as quickly. But even without competition, you know, I think that simplifying their daily racing schedule, uh, making some refinements to the safety rating and the I rating system, um, 
at some point, you know, here's a topic, Billy. Billy, if you're still watching. At some point, does iRacing have to do a reset? At some point, has it all become so skewed with those who did certain things at this period in time, others who are joining now, and that it's not even compl- not even fair for a guy who's been in there 10 years like me compared to somebody? I mean, I have an A license in everything, and I have a 2,500 I rating in road racing. I'm not sure I could back those numbers up. I'm not sure I'm deserving of an A license if the next license up is a pro. Uh, should the license system have something more to do with just meeting the requirements, which they've done, made it be? So, I mean, you can you can get an A license and never race a single race. Um, but they need to do that because in order to drive certain cars that you might have paid for, you need to be able to be eligible to drive them, whether it's skill-based or not. Um, yeah, they have enough issues for it to be frustrating, but enough, not enough for people to abandon it. I agree, because where would I go? If I left iRacing, where would I go for that open competition against the real world sensation that I need to cure my competitive need in sim racing? I don't get it in a league race. Um, I have a lot of fun in a league race, but I don't get that same feeling of open competition just don't um all right what else i think there's a few other things to talk about today we're at 30 minutes and i've only done two news stories pretty funny um let's see here so last chance to enter the race room spa spa 2.4 hour in race room it's on the 28th and uh, last chance leaderboard closes tomorrow that was posted six hours ago uh you can enter here by going this is at their twitter page game race room i have to look at my calendar can i crash this can i crash this and run this as a all drivers will be invited to the multiplayer races on 28 7 or 7 28 if you're in america 2019 improve your lap time on the leaderboard to qualify for a higher division race so you look at this leaderboard, and this is completely doing exactly what, you know, the mentality behind iRacing. So you're going to use the leaderboard. Oh, True Racing, you missed it. Uh, well, actually, it's still kind of ongoing. I can't seem to let it go. <laughs> um, so depending on where <coughs> you are, you're going to be put into racing splits based on your qualifying time here looking at their leaderboard. So... Let's just say you came in and you put a 71st lap time just ahead of Romain here. Um, these are the guys that you would be racing against and so on and so on. Um, see some pretty big names here, don't we? Um, so anyway, uh, just today. Today is the end of the leaderboard. Do we have a timer on the leaderboard? Didn't give me... It says uh, closes tomorrow. And... Yeah, there you go. I'm going to have to make a run at that today, I think. I don't have time, but I'm going to have to figure out how to do it. Okay, Forza Week in Review. I don't care. Do you? If you do, you can. Oh, Microsoft Store in London opening. Are they going to show the McLaren? There it is. There she is. Oh, so they don't just have this open, open to the public for anyone to get in, it looks like. It is runnable. But they have these for everybody who wants to go play the normal version. Um, and a few other things, including talking about the tractor. Uh, Gran Turismo, they're heading to the stateside for round 28, wow, of the FIA GTC Nations Cup. Uh, so that's a little heads up of that going on. And then we have a leaderboard just looking at, I want to get an idea who the who's who there are. And look at TRL. TRL is still just killing it um lightning trl lightning trl monyarodi down there uh trl tutu uh a bunch of their guys in the top 10 and let's see we've got uh, williams coke oh is that coke lopez i think on the williams which coke is that um and williams fuvero so williams doing really well over there as well and what you're starting to see now is you are starting to see the Williams eSport. You know, the various eSport teams are starting to be recognizable 
as their esport team identities. Name Butcherer. I, I did. I should have just put that up, didn't I? I meant to. I forgot. I, I should just know any time I open my mouth with a name that it's going to come out wrong. Um, so, okay. What else? Live for Speed. This is big. Uh, we haven't talked Live for Speed. They were on a roll for a while, coming out with some updates pretty regularly for a little while. And it was starting to, I was getting optimistic that Live for Speed was back. I've said it so many times. Then it kind of got a little quiet. So we're, we're going to have to keep our eye on them still. But today they posted this. For those with direct drive OSW wheels, update 7 lets you feel the forces as directly as possible. In options control under access force feedback, set the two new force feedback settings to maximum and this is still a test patch that i guess has come out so if you want to get that you can try it out and see if the force feedback is better on a direct drive because you know the direct drive wheel literally did not exist when live for speed was still in open for business take off the disclaimer thank you very much thank you very much pro sim cheers Um, okay. What else? Not a whole lot. Uh, didn't mention this last week, but it was sent in, um, and I forgot to mention it. There, there's an introduction of the five-point tire model that's coming to ACC, Assetto Corsa Competizione. Um, this is a lot more detail in what the tires are actually doing, and... You know, when we talk about physics, we talk about the quality and depth of a sim. Uh, yeah, I just leave the disclaimer on all the time. That would be safe. That's not about I should make a smaller disclaimer that fits right down there um, between those names that just lives there permanently. Make that part of my uh, border graphic or something. Uh, but anyway, this is a big deal. When you talk about them, you know, the tire, the first thing in racing is tires you know it's 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 how our automobile interacts with the track right that's our first point of contact it's our only point of contact between the car we're driving and the track we're driving it on um they are going to a five point meaning that there is just that much data that they're trying to crunch numbers on and use as relevance for what you're feeling and getting out of the sim uh could be a big deal as you know, with other sims, when they start playing with the tire, they're getting into a touchy, dangerous area where how much can you change without it changing the feel? And if it changes the feel too much, what's going to happen when all of us sim racers start bitching and moaning about it? <laughs> Walking a fine line. GT Planet, that's where the article was on Project Cars Revolution. That's going to be the new name. It's not going to be Project Cars 3. <clears throat> and this is still very, very early. Um, we have no real official news on when it's going to come out, uh, but they are talking about Project Cars Revolution, and and that was actually spied. If you go back to the Magic Box, the Magic Box, the slightly Mad Box console that they're developing and considering, uh, uh, there was a screenshot that showed it as Project Cars Revolution. So it will not be Project Cars Three. It will be Revolution and. Ian Bell, the owner, uh, or head, I guess, is has, I, I can't find the quote, but he's been quoted as saying that Project Cars Revolution is going to be 200% better, already 200% better than Project Cars 2, uh, and also quoted as saying that it's going to be built on being fun. So I'm not sure, like, yeah, I'm not sure how that really affects things. Oh, you're right. Satoshi, why are they selling them? We were hoping for 300%. Would it take, how many percent better would it take for it to be the top sim? Uh, I love Project Cars, but um, yeah, being fun. Uh, one thing I say about competition, there are aspects of it that are fun. But like when I used to play soccer, when I used to race bicycles, when I used to race shifter carts, when I used to race or still race sim racing cars, the moment of competition I would not describe as fun. It's intense. It's it's brain racking. Uh, it's it's a lot on the line. A lot of nerves involved. However, later on when I'm sitting back in my chair watching TV, thinking about it. Um, well, 
that's when it becomes fun. So I'm not sure. You can only add so much fun to the moment of racing if it's a racing title. Um, when I hear something saying that it's going to be based on fun, I start thinking about Forza Horizon uh, and things like that. So I'm not sure. Not sure. But 200%. It's already 200%. Um, is that a slam by Ian Bell on Project Cars 2? <laughs> that almost sounds like a shot at Project Cars 2 by the very owner uh, or head of the company. So, um, upload vid quick. I want to share. <laughs> okay, Cafino. Car Heroes! Thank you very much, buddy. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. What else? I think I only have one more story. This is it. We've come to the end of the show. Come to the end of the day. WCS League. Uh, this is that knockout league that we were talking about. Their entries are settled. This is $1,000 on the line. Um, and some big names here, including very own Mitchy Hoyer. Look at that, Mitchy Hoyer sitting in ninth place. Good job there. Oh, there goes our spinning tires for car heroes. Thank you. Moving the sim racing forward continually. I'm trying, man, but I feel like we took a step backward this weekend, or at least I pushed us back today. Uh, yeah, 400%. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like Project Cars. I think, uh, well, Project Cars 2. I thought it was fun. By the way, I did think it was a fun game, and I still think uh, daily about going and seeing what the leaderboard challenge is and just going and hitting it up. Uh, that's where I would have a lot of fun. So top three are, put our disclaimer up, top three are Kirill Burakov, Yernej Simonik, and Jerome Kuykel. Not seeing a lot of names that Sean can pronounce very well on this one. So there are the top 30 that are going to be in this thousand dollar shootout uh or knockout i guess they're calling it and what there's 0.9 second so under a second of a gap between these top 30 drivers they will take on six rounds using the studio 397 marusha 2012 car on r factor 2 with the chance to win a share of a thousand dollars courtesy of mode 4 and avid chronic racing look at that mitchy hoyer in ninth going after uh avid chronic money i love it i love it uh anyway so that is that's where we're at uh not a lot more to tell you about hope you enjoyed the show hope you tolerated or enjoyed the rant if you hate what i said feel free to email me and tell me how wrong i am if you love what we did be sure to thumbs up today's show be sure to thumbs down if you hated it that's okay i'm okay i gotta learn some way and be sure to subscribe and tell a friend so we can continue to grow. That's going to do it for today's show. Get out there. Do yourself some sim racing. Maybe go get a qualifying run in for that uh, race room 2.4 hour. That should be fun. I might get a chance to do that today as well. Maybe we'll stream it. Not sure. I've got a film. I've got my review ready to film on the next level wheel stand direct drive. Um, so we'll be filming that today, and depending on how long that takes, or if I want to get into editing, will affect what driving I get to do today. And uh, that's going to do it for this one. So again, get out there, do some sim racing. Happy Monday. Have a great week, everybody. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.